we're going to do a little basic gold making. One of the most important things I think is the add-on GSM on the third string. Basically what that does, it allows me to see the pricing on pretty much everything in the auction house and what the trends are and if I crafting what's profitable and what is How is that? Is that better? Is that better? I am not sure why I have all my audio settings cranked. All right, so um, my preferred crafting or my preferred gold making method is crafting. I am not a big fan of just going out and grinding mobs for hours and hours and then selling what I get. That's I don't like doing that. For me, that's kind of boring. Tell the same thing for hours on end. I, I'm not a big fan of that. Plus, you end up with competition and. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I prefer crafting. Right now, my main sources of income in-game are alchemy and inscription. They are really, really good right now. Um, I plan on expanding out into other professions as I get those characters leveled, namely blacksmithing, and possibly um, the legendary market, but it is such a high buy-in to be able to sell rank three and four. The last time I priced it out to sell, or to be able to level legendary crafting to make one piece for leatherworking at a rank four was 1.8 million. And right now there's just not enough return on that investment for me to even bother trying to get into the legendary market. So I just mainly stick to raid consumables at this point. I'm going to go and bring up my TSM and we'll start on that. TSM or trade skill manager is, it's a great add-on. It can tell you pretty much anything you need to know about your income sources and all of that. Your dashboard, it can track your how much gold you have by the day or even by the hour. As you can see right here, I made a big purchase. I cleaned out my mailbox. I made another big purchase. And you can see all the mailbox cleanouts. Now, one of the things Trade Skill Manager or Trade Skill Master has, it's groups. And you take all the stuff that you can literally sell in game, you can put it into groups to make it easier to sell. Now, I've got all mine set up by crafting materials and then another one set for and another set for actual crafted products. The crafted materials, I mainly use that just to buy stuff. I, I don't sell crafting materials very often. I'd rather use them to sell them as a crafted item. For example, um, we've got my Shadowlands right here. My Alchemy is my biggest one, and I've got that broken down into raid consumables. And under that, I've got flasks, which has my two flasks in it and pots, which has all the raid consumable pots. 
Um, those are my those are my bread and butter right there. I went and made right around six thousand pots today, and they'll probably be gone by tomorrow. So, with the operations, what that allows you to do is it streamlines the process of crafting so you're not trying to figure out what's profitable, what's not, what actually sells, and what doesn't. Let's hop into uh, my alchemy here. Okay, so this is all the stuff I can currently do for alchemy. Um, what you see here is you've got some in green and some in red. The green, obviously, that's profit, and the red is would be crafting at a loss, which is something you never, ever want to do. Why would you want to lose money making something? Um, right here, we've got spec, uh, the intellect pot. It's got a crafting cost right now of 286 and change. It is selling at a 50 gold profit, which puts it at right around a 20% profit. Let me do some math here on that quick. Yeah, it's, it's just under a 20% profit, so right now that would not be something I craft. I try to keep my rule, I only craft at a 20% or greater profit. You have to remember, the auction house is going to take 5% of your profit right off the top. So if you're crafting at a 5 to 10% profit, there's really nothing there for you. So I try to only do 20% or higher. Let's see here, our um, strength pot, that's crafting at 140 gold a piece, and we've got a 23 gold profit. Again, that's just under the 20% markup that I require for my personal standards for this. We go down here to flasks. Flasks aren't a big money maker. We're at under a 10% profit on those. By the time you get your auction house cut, there really is, there's not much meat left on that bone. Yes, um, TSM updates all on its own. There's an in-game add-on as well as a desktop app that you use and you set up for your server. And it, it pulls information data from there and it can also pull information data from the Undermine Journal, which we'll get to in a minute. Alrighty, for example, um, right now for this uh, spectral flask of stamina, um, we've got, it's showing 200, or excuse me, 22 auctions as of one hour, 35 minutes ago. And for the nightshade, for example, it's showing a 75 gold pricing on that. Rising Glory, it's showing a 27 gold, 99 silver as an hour or and a half ago. And the Moro route, that one is lagging a little behind updating-wise. 64 gold as of eight hours ago. I'm not sure why that one's lagging so far behind. Usually it's within an hour or so. <clears throat> now we'll go down here into our oils and extracts. 
the two big ones for that is your embalmer's oil and your shadow coal oil. The embalmer's oil is crafting it for basically 40 gold, and it's got a 4 gold profit, which would mean I normally would not craft that. But earlier in the week, I bought 15,000 Death Blossom at a pretty good price, so I'm going to go ahead and craft that. Same thing here with our Shadow Coil. 40 gold um, crafting cost, 4 gold profit, but since I had a whole bunch of it, I made it anyway. We look at our Shade Stone. Shade Stone is a huge money maker if you do not need it for cauldrons. It's crafting at 739 gold with a retail price of, as you can see right now, 5,200 as of an hour and a half ago. It has been as high as 12,000. And I'm going to hop over to inscription here. And all of this, this works for every profession. Um, not all professions are going to be as profitable as others. And sometimes old content crafting will be more profitable than current content if you have the right plans. Now for inscription, you can see here that the missive of crit is crafting at a loss, but haste, mastery, and versatility are crafting at a profit. Haste is going to be the cheapest of them at 861 crafting cost for a 78 gold profit. Under 10%, that's not good. After the auction house cut, there's really no meat left on that bone. And versatility, that's crafting at 1,147 gold for a 51 gold profit. By the time the auction house takes your cut on that, you're going to be in the hole. Codexes, those are a pretty good product right now. Um, about 1,200 gold crafting cost, 700 gold profit. Just like our contracts. Those are almost, those are about a 75% profit margin, so I make lots of these. They're both about 780 gold crafting cost, and they've got about a five to 600 gold profit. So that, that's huge. And now, you may be thinking, how often do contracts sell? TSM can tell you that as well. You mouse over the item itself, and now you can see it's got all of the, the sales data. It's showing the region sale rate of 0.7. So 7% of all of them that are posted get sold. And it's a 1.6 sold per day. But that can be misleading. And I'll go back to Alchemy and show you why that can be misleading. Ventus runes. Ventus runes are another big one. They're going to start selling like crazy come the first of the year when a lot more guilds start pushing into Castle Nathria. Those are crafting for 1,700 gold with almost a 500 gold profit. These two weapons from Inscription sell very well. Um... The cheaper one is the Soul Keeper Spire. I have sold 20 of those for an average price of 1,200 gold. Um, the mass milling, it's not accurate. They've never really got that to work for mass milling to show what the actual value is. That's just something you got to live with, I guess. Now, I'm going to hop back over to Alchemy here for a second to show you why the data it says how many are sold daily is kind of misleading. We'll go, we'll go down here to Shadow Core Oil. Now, this is showing that there's 458 sold per day. 
I've sold 5,600 of these in less than a month. And if I put 600 on the auction house on a raid night, I will sell 500 or 600. So the, the weekends that you don't see a lot of raiding, those days chop the numbers daily sold. It's an average. So if you sell 1,000 one day but only sell 500 the next, the average is out to 750. So sometimes it can be a little misleading as to it's actually selling more than what it shows. But if you look at the region sale rate, it's 34%. I don't have a problem selling out everything I put on. It's, for that, it's about timing. I try to put all my auctions on around 6.30 in the morning when people are getting ready and they're going to be going to work. A lot of them do their shopping beforehand for that raid night. And the biggest one is putting your auctions on right before normal raid time. I try to get all my pre-raid auctions on at like 6.30, between 6.15 and 6.30. And typically, I'll have 50,000 in sales before I finish listing everything. Um, last night, for example, I had over 200,000 in sales just during our raid. It, it's ridiculous how quickly stuff sells for raid consumables right before the raid starts. Now... We've got a TSM groups category. That is a really good thing. It's what I use to restock everything. Um, you'd go and click on all the groups of stuff that you're wanting to sell, and you'd hit restock. And in this case, it's telling me I need to restock my stamina flasks, feasts, some cooking or some food, and some enchants. And what makes this even better is I can predetermine how many I want to have on hand at any time. And then when I hit restock, it knows how much I have, and it automatically says to craft X number to bring me back to that spot. For example, for the Shadow Core Oil or any other raid pot, I want to keep 1,000 on hand. So... If I've got 300 on the auction house, it'll have me craft 700. And what you would do then, you hop over to gathering, and you select your crafter. Make sure you've got all your professions selected for it, and then you just click open task list. Now, what that does, That gives you a breakdown of everything you need to buy from the auction house and from a vendor. Uh, let me go fly to Oribos here quick so I can give an a, a example of how that works. <clears throat> now, while I'm flying, we'll start touching into the groups and the operations a little bit. So for my crafting operations, for my pots, my minimum restock quantity is one. My maximum restock quantity, I have 1,000. I started out with that at 400. Then I bumped it up to 600 because I kept running out. And then I bumped it up to 1,000 recently. <clears throat> um, I've been get, I just get all my apps from, or my add-ons from... The, the replacement for Twitch, Overwolf. TSM also has their own website that you could get it from. And you will actually, you should probably go to the website to get it because you will want the desktop app as well. The desktop app is what makes it work so good. So, this, right, this next box here is probably one of the most important things that makes TSM so great. TSM is one of the reasons I got back into gold making and stayed in it, because I no longer have to do the math to see what's profitable and what's not. 
I've got my minimum profit set right here for 20%. That way, when I hit restock, it will only include things that are a 20% profit or greater. That way, I don't have to try to do the math. Yes, that's the app helper. And for down here, I just got it applying to my raid pots. To go hand in hand with that, you have your your auctioning operation. Now, for my pots, I'm only setting my auction duration for 12 hours because I'm posting it early in the morning, and then in the evening, I will cancel all of my existing auctions and relist everything in time for people to buy it for their raids. <clears throat> um, for my pots, I want to list up to 1,000 at a time, so I've got that set at 1,000, because when I would list 400 or even 600, a lot of times they would sell out within 20, 30 minutes, and I'm losing potential sales. I don't want to keep any in my bags because I want to sell them. Now, let's talk a little bit about undercutting. Undercutting is the absolute worst thing you can do. The only thing undercutting does is it drives the price down. The way There was a big change to the way the auction house works. I believe it was for 8.3. Um, it's no longer listed as lowest price it's lowest price and last listed so the the last person to list an item at a certain price will be the first person who gets the sale at that price so there's no need to undercut anymore even by one copper because then someone is just going to go undercut you for that same amount and you're not going to get the sale then anyway now when i'm listing things I want to keep a 20% profit at a minimum. So I've got my minimum price listed here to be whichever is more, 120% of the crafting costs or 110% of the vendor sell price. The vendor sell price is important because sometimes pricing can get a little wonky and the craft in your profit price will be below vendor sell price. That's especially true with a lot of older products from previous expansions. And if the price happens to be below my minimum price, I'm going to post it at my minimum price anyway because stuff ahead of me or stuff lower than me price-wise might sell out, which would put me at the top of the list. And plus, I want to protect my 20% profit margin. My maximum price, I've got 5,000% crafting, which is absolutely ridiculous. But for some things you need to, especially this early in the expansion. Um, for example, the shade, um, shade Stones. Those were selling at a ridiculous markup. And they were selling well because you needed them for cauldrons. My normal price, I've got a 300% um, of my crafting costs, a 300% markup, basically. Now, it's not often going to be at my normal price. It'll pick a price between my normal price and my minimum price based on where the pricing on the auction house currently is. All right, now I'm going to go cruise over to the vendor and show how easy it is to buy all of the vendor items using TSM. Now, you got to make sure you've got it, the vendor selected for the TSM version, which would be right here. Otherwise, it doesn't work.
So we've got our list of stuff we need to buy from the vendor here, and most of this is all cooking stuff. So I'm just going to click Buy. And it automatically buys all of those vendor items. You, you don't have to do any math. You don't have to pick them out yourself. It just does it. <coughs> Now I'm going to hop over to my bank character and I'll show you how the doing the same thing on the auction house works. Now, for me, I know it was for me, it was like drinking from a fire hose, trying to grasp all of this stuff and try to figure it out and get good at it and as quick a time as possible. And for me, it literally was like trying to drink from a fire hose. There was just no way I could do it. It probably took me a month or so to get comfortable with my pricings and my operations and stuff like that. Plus, I was watching videos on YouTube for a couple hours a day and I'll put a couple names of people that are really good to follow who are really, really good with TSM in the chat here in a minute. All right, so we're going to go over here to the auction house I've got in my garrison, which I did to avoid the plague during the pre-expansion event. We just hop on Browse, and you just click the Scan All button. And just like, it's a little, well, it's a little different from the vendor, but you have to go each one of these. For example, you click buy out and it automatically populates the number that you need to buy for the crafting you need to do. And in this case, I need 1,469 iridescent amberjack. A, which would cost me 55,748 gold. Now, I'm not going to buy it this time because I've already done my daily crafting and I've got a ton of stuff. And I don't really sell too many feasts simply because they have a really high um, crafting cost. Now, this creepy crawler meat, um, it's saying I need 1,430 of those. And again, again, I would just click buy if I wanted to actually buy all that. Now, for the Rising Glory, it's saying I need 30. Um, for the little bit of stuff it was telling me I'm going to make. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that because I know I will use it. Um, then you just click Buy Commodity, and it automatically buys the 30 that you needed. It's so great. I used to have a notebook that I had to keep track of all of this stuff in, and it just it got to be too much. So 
I stopped making gold and stopped working on it and would just buy a token once a month or once a week. But this is this is so much easier now. So let's just take a look at all of my crafting materials. This is probably 99% raid consumables. Already, I listed this stuff about 20 minutes ago, and given it's a holiday, I wasn't expecting too much, but I'm already at 13,000 in sales with another 864,000 on there. And if you look up here, it tells you what it was. So I sold, I've got three codexes for almost 6,000. I've got a bunch of enchants, and I've got food. Food is a huge seller. Everyone uses food. They use it in the Torghast. They use it in dungeons. They use it in raids. Food sells. Don't let anyone tell you food doesn't sell. For example, this iridescent ravioli with applesauce, I've sold 1,743 of those. The steak a la mode, I've sold 1,602 of those. So food is a very good seller. Let me hop back over to my shaman and we'll take a look at the, the cooking because I missed that. So I started my gold-making journey, for lack of a better term, in August because I was going to try to get the long boy. I had like 100,000 total across all my characters, and within two months, I was up to 2 million. Um, not doing much more than I'm doing now. It was rough because at the end of an expansion, nothing really sells, but... Some pots were still selling. There was a bunch of inscription stuff that was still selling. Food was still selling. So I just made a go at it. Um, a question asked in chat about my shopping strings. Right now, the shopping strings are a little broken. Um, everything I've been hearing that's going to be fixed with the next version of the add-on. So if I go to click on a shopping for, say, just herbs, it'll bring up hundreds of different items, not just those herbs. So I, I'm really not using that right now. There are some things I am doing. Um, usually I just buy my mats, just like I just showed you, off the task list. But sometimes I do look for good deals. Like earlier in the week, um, Death Blossom had been hovering around 25 gold or so for probably right around a week. And it was killing my profits on my weapon oils. It dipped down to 19. It dipped below 20 gold per, and I went and bought everything under 20 gold, which was about 15,000 Death Blossom. 
So if if I it's something I know I will use a lot of, and I'm fairly confident the price will be stable and it dips low, I will buy as much as I can. Yes, I have modified my default pricing strings. Um, I did not like the way they were doing it. The default pricing string is based on your min buyout. I don't like doing that because you can end up crafting at a loss that way. I've got my pricing strings to not sell anything under a 20% profit. If it's not a 20% profit, I'm not even going to craft it because that's not worth my time. Um, my crafting today took just over three hours. It was about 350,000 worth of product for about 150,000 gold profit. I'm not expecting that all to sell today. Um, if this was a normal week and raids were going on tonight and tomorrow, I'd probably sell most of that. Now, for cooking, um, food sells, like I said. You've got feasts here going for a 50% markup. Oh, what keeps me from going AFK? Uh, this does. Little piece of cardboard. I stick it between one of my turning keys, and it just pins the key down, and I just spin a circle and craft for a half hour, 45 minutes. You can turn while crafting. You just can't move forward or backwards. Yeah, both feasts right now are selling at a 50% profit, but I'm, I'm not really wanting to get into that market at the moment because according to this, there's just not a lot of them selling right now. And oh, one thing I missed is right here, we've got this column right here with these white numbers. That is the percentage of the auctions that sell daily. No, um, crafting does not stop in AFK. Um, I've run into that before where I'll set it up to craft and it'll be a, like a 45 minute long craft and I will go AFK and it will log me out before I was done. I like to see something at least 0.20 to 0.25 before I'm, I'm really going to start crafting it unless I know it will sell for sure. Um, all of these foods sell really well and I mean, they're only 27, 28% sales, but they sell. They, they just do. You very rarely will see anything in the 40% range. That's just crazy. Um, kind of. Um, with the operations here, let's get back to the operations. We'll go back to my crafting pots. Um, I use my min right here, minimum profit amount. I've got that set for 20%. So anything that would craft under a 20% profit, it will not craft when I hit um, restock. I, I do all of that with the restocking function so I don't have to do the math to see what's a 20% profit and what's not. Yeah, if it's under a 20% profit, I do not craft it, period. Oh, for that, um, as far as I know, there is no way to tie that into a, a string. That said, 
I am at like a basic level with TSM. So there might be a way that I'm just not aware of. Um, does anybody have any questions? I uh, have anything that I, oh, one other add on that I want to touch on here is called worth it. Um, this is one that's really, really great. If you're one of the people that wants to go out and farm materials. Um, Ah, uh, if I get something that comes up in my crafting ops that I know doesn't sell very well, I just um, cross it out and don't craft it. For example, here, let me get a little crazy here. I'm going to go ahead and slick on all the crafting stuff that I can make completely. Which brings up every single thing in my professions across all of my characters that I can sell at a 20% or more profit. A lot of this stuff might not sell very quickly at all. Um, and according to this, I'd invest 400,000 gold and make a 450,000 gold profit. But stuff like the, the turtle contracts, those aren't selling very much anymore. The high board compendiums, they're not selling that much anymore. All of these, um, like the scrolls of stamina, those don't really sell at all. Your glyphs, they do sell fairly well. Um, I'm not doing a whole lot with glyphs right now, but there are people who sell them and make a lot of gold just selling glyphs. Does that, uh, kind of answer your question there? Right, let's hop back over to worth it right now. If you're someone who wants to go craft or go gathering materials, you want to go farm herbs or ore or leather, this is a great add-on for that. Um, for example, we'll, we'll look at the Sinvir ore. Right now, it's at about a 30,000 gold per hour for gathering it. Um, the main location is Revendreth. And Sinvir Ore, it's selling for 45 gold a piece, and there's 2,600 of them selling a day. It sells like crazy. Now, during that one hour of um, gathering, they picked up 441 Sinvir Ore, 115 Porous Stone, 500 Laystrite Ore, 23 Elithium Ore, and 22 Shaded Stone. That all total comes out to of 30,000 gold per hour at current market prices. All of these numbers here are current market prices. And you can use this to see which farms you want to do that give the best gold per hour. And you can even get a little more into it. Say you want to go for skinning. Skinning is a big money maker right now. Um Green Dragon Scale is going for 60,000 gold per hour, but it doesn't sell that great. It's a 4% sell rate. I've, I had a whole bunch of those at one point. It took me a couple months to sell them. So, I mean, you got, you got to look at the sell rate. The War Bear Leather, for example, I have farmed that and I've sold it because they use that to make um, uh, vanilla oil transmog units. 
you can go to say my let's see you want to go pick some herbs where's the best place to do it that makes the most gold right here look at your sell rates Moro root right now is doing 21,000 gold per hour and that's going to sell like crazy cuz it's current content Virgil's torch is at 9 or 9500 gold per hour And where this really comes, makes it really, really great is for your flippings. But for milling, for example, for your, all the uh, scribes out there. Zenithid, is, if you mill 200, it's a 58,000 gold profit. It'll cost you 10,000. Doesn't sell that well, though. And it gives you all of your top herbs for that. Same thing with smelting. I've done a lot of the smelting. Um, go farm old content, convert the ore into bars, and you sell that. Like Titan Steel Bars, for example. One bar costs 1448 gold to make. And it's a 251 gold profit. And they sell. They sell very well. It it's only an eight uh, percent sell rate, but it sells better than what it seems. I've sold thirty five of those, and that's without even really trying. Hmm. My numbers for these are way off. I'm not sure why. I've sold a lot more than that. For example, serenite bars, you farm that up in uh, winter grasp. It's a four gold profit per. So, I mean, it's... Or you can just buy it off the auction, buy the ore off the auction house, smelt it into bars, and net yourself four gold in profit. Now, you got to be careful, because... You're going to be right in that range of breaking even after the auction house cut. And these are the these are the ones that suck. Obsidian bars, those used to sell like mad for a really good profit. Not anymore. And another nice thing about worth it is let's say you wanted to go do one of those current content farms. Let's say you wanted to go farm up some Widow Bloom. You can go right over here. If you have the add-on routes and route importer, you can click on this route and you can import that and it will put the overlay right on your map. And then um, let me pull up a map I've got from Winter Grasp. You'll see right here, I've got this green line. That is the route I made. And when I'm farming ore, I would just follow this route. Just do a couple laps per I in winter grasp, I got three to four laps per hour, and I was averaging about eighteen thousand gold per hour, just mining I mean completely mindless, put a movie on the other monitor, and mine go. So, TSM Trade Skill Master and Worth It. Those are really the two biggest ones that I would recommend getting. Um, another, another asset you could do is um, it's the Undermine Journal. What that is, is it's a website that tracks pricing data 
almost in real time. Let me see if I can swap the screens here. All right, I'm kind of struggling to get it to switch from the game to the website, but I'll put the website in my chat, and it'll be a link to the Sargeras um, item data. Um, I am not able to right now. I'm doing a little tutorial on some basic gold making. I can't right now. Um, probably another 20 minutes or so. So does, I know I covered a lot of material. Is there any questions anyone has? Um, like I said earlier, it's like trying to drink from a fire hose. There's just so much data that you can pull from so many different places. When I started making gold in Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King, I was doing probably 30K a day or so which was really, really, really great for back then. And that was just off jewel crafting and alchemy. But the problem I ended up running into is it was taking so much time to figure out what's profitable. Okay, the mats cost X. I can sell the, the jewel for this much. Is it worth it? And I just stopped. So if you're interested in making gold, TSM is an absolute lifesaver. It it saves so much time. If if you think of any questions um after, hit me up. I'm I'm an open book as far as gold making goes. Um Yeah, I mean <laughs> I'll tell you anything I anything I know. Is there anybody want me to demonstrate anything? Um, any of the crafting ops, any of the restocking? I can. Anybody want me to go back over any of that? Sure. Um, let me see what I got. I'm looking for something I can make that I've got mats for. Oh, 
Let me get to the mailbox here. I've got to grab something out of it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little mass milling, and then I'm going to make some ink. I'm going to go ahead and do 100 mass mills of Vigil's Torch. I'm going to, I'm going to cue that, and then I just hit Craft Next. And it's going to automatically do that first item that's listed. And it tells you down here how long it's going to take, um, what your cost is, what your profit. But again, for mass milling, the profit is absolutely wrong. Yes, you will have to press next for each new item. And for example, if I had a whole bunch of things queued up right now, as soon as it got done with this mass milling, of the Vigil's Torch, it would stop. And I would have to hit Craft Next for the next item, which is really the only downside to AFK crafting. Yes, doing mass milling for a separate herb would require another button press. I would love to set it up where I just hit Start and it does my three hours worth of crafting while I'm upstairs watching a movie. That would be great. It just doesn't work that way, unfortunately. All right, we've got that done. Now we're going to do a whole bunch of make some ink. Let's see what we got. Okay, I've got 11 tranquil pigments, 432 luminous pigment, and 166 umbral pigment. But I don't have any water or vials, so let's go pick those up. That is correct. Um, with my operations, they will not um, restock anything under a twenty percent crap under a twenty percent profit, and it will not list anything on the auction house under a twenty percent profit. So we'll go ahead and we'll queue up all of the ink. And when it's in here in your crafting queue, it ranks it by the most profitable to least profitable. For example, our our luminous ink will have a 63 or almost a 7,000 gold profit. Our umbral ink will have just under a thousand gold profit, and our tranquil ink, it says I'm crafting at a loss. Which, for eleven of them, I'm not, not going to care because I'll use it. And then you just hit craft next.
And in another seven minutes, I will have to go and click Craft Next again to do the Umbral Ink. I really haven't had an issue with sitting on stock because mainly what I'm selling are raid consumables, and especially on such a high population server as Sargeras, they just sell. I think the longest I've held on to something without it selling for the raid consumables is a day or two. Now, some of the older content stuff, like the titanium bars, the titan steel, the fell steel, those are used for mainly transmog gear crafting. So those may take a while to sell. Some of those I've had sit for two, three weeks before I sold everything that I had. But current content stuff, especially raid consumables, it just sells quick. I mean, I'll typically have 50,000 in sales just while I am posting it right before a raid. I think it was yesterday I sold out of one of my pots within the first five minutes. I was just out of time, so I just couldn't make any more. I'm going to go ahead and reduce this just to make it a little quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and hit craft next. And it's going to go ahead and make me 50 inks. This window here is what you see me posting in our economy tab all the time. And that is literally everything I have made that I'm putting on the auction house. I don't exclude anything from that post. That's it. That's what I'm making my gold on. Uh, someone had commented that they can't believe that um, Phantom Fire sells... Phantom Fire sells like crazy. I can't make enough. All right, so our Luminous Ink just finished crafting. So now I just got to go hit Craft Next to start on the Umbral Ink. Probably tomorrow, early afternoon, I will have this video up on my YouTube channel. If you want to watch it there again, or if you want to watch it on Twitch, they'll both be available. My YouTube channel is the exact same name, so it makes it easy. And then once that crafting is done, I just click Craft Next, and it does its thing. This method, it's my preferred method because I'm kind of lazy. I don't really have to do anything to do this. The only downside to this method is it requires some capital. Um, you don't have to go and buy... 300,000 worth of materials like I do, you can start small as long as you keep that 20% or more profit margin, 
you will grow the amount of gold you have. Let's say you can only buy 50,000. You buy your 50,000, you sell it all, you just made yourself a 10,000 gold profit. I mean, you, you can start small and grow your way big. You just have to be willing to do it. I started the expansion at just a hair over 2 million gold. The first week I dumped probably 700,000 into leveling my uh, leveling some professions. I made it back up to 2 million. I dropped down again because I've spent like a, almost a million on BOE items. Went back up to 2 million again. Made a huge investment on some herbs to the tune of almost 500,000, which dropped me down, and now I'm working my way back up again. But because I've got that 20% profit, I know I am always moving forward instead of moving back. Does anyone else have any questions? Anything you want me to touch on? Anything you want me to elaborate on? All right, if no one else has any questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and see if I can get into any keys tonight. Um, I thank you for watching my stream, and I appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much.